Okay, we're going to apply some rates to this question here. We have a 17 foot tall statue of, um, of an L.L. Bean duck boot. There it is. It sits outside the company's headquarters in Freeport, Maine. And look at that lovely lady right next to it. Yes, that would be me. Mm -hmm. We drove through Maine a couple summers ago and um, went camping up near a national park. And this was just impressive. So. If that statue is based on a boot that is typically eight inches tall, how tall would the giant be who wears this huge boot? Okay, so we have the real boot, which is eight inches. Now, I'm, I can tell you my height. That's my height. But, you know, you could also kind of eyeball it if you didn't, if you weren't giving it to me. You know, if the statue's 17 feet and I'm well below the halfway point, which is kind of there, you know, you can kind of estimate my height. But it wouldn't be as good as knowing it from the real person, which is me. Okay, so five foot nine. And then let's see. We're gonna have a few issues here. Oh, then there's the giant boot, which is this, and then the giant person, which is this. Now what we want to do is we wanna make a rate of change. We kind of wanna make a um uh, let's see here. Rate, oops, rate of change. What we want is we want the ratio kind of of, you know, how the boots change over over how the person changes, or you can do it vice versa. But, you know, the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to say it's going to be boot over person, just for the heck of it. Okay, well, let's think about this. Um, we have the real ones. So we can say, hey, the boot is eight inches. And then the person is five foot nine. Now here's the problem. Um, in case you didn't catch on that. They're not the same units, right? I mean, eight inches and then five feet, nine inches. We're mixing our, our issues. And then this one's in feet, which is even worse. So we've got all sorts of problems here. We need them all to be consistent. We need them all to be the same. So that there have to be inches, 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 or feet, feet, feet. But you can't mix and match like this. This is bad. Okay, so let's go back here for a second and kind of use our heads. We need to take eight inches and we either need to make it feet or we need to make all of these ones inches. So if you want to make them inches, you have to multiply. Hold on one sec. All right, I'm going to pull up Excel here. So... I can do this a couple ways. Like for one thing, I could say, okay, I need five feet times 12 inches per foot. Hey, remember that stuff, unit conversion from unit one. And then I can add nine to it and that'll get me 69, right? So five times 12 plus nine makes 69. So I could say, okay, this is 69 inches. The flip side of that is I could also say that it's how many feet? Okay, so nine inches divided by 12 inches per foot, whoops. No, oh, it's going to, hold on. I love Excel, I swear. Let's see. Okay. So equals 9 divided by 12, 0.75. So I could say it's 69 inches or 5.75. And of course, you guys have a calculator. I just don't have one on me. So you can use your calculator for this. There. I could do the same thing with 8. Right? If I took 8 and divided by 12, I get 0.67, right? It's actually 0.6666666 repeating. So I can do that. Mm -hmm. There we go. So it's 0.6 feet. So that would work. Or we could, Let's see, well, this one's already feet, so we could change it so that it's um, inches. I just need to know what 17 times 12 is. And no, I don't know that off the top of my head. There we go, 204. Okay, so we could say this is 204 inches. Cool. All right, so notice you have a choice, right? You can either use feet, 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 or inches, you know, and I'll, I'll separate these a little bit. I'll put inches in red. So inches, 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 right? We got to use it one grouping or the other. So either the f feet or the inches. Um, I'm betting you guys can probably handle the inches because they're whole numbers. So I'm going to use the decimals just for fun. So the boot for me, the real person 
was 0 0.6 repeated. Okay? 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, 6. Like that. And then the person, me, 5.75. Right? So that's feet over feet. Cool? Okay, so that's the real one. What about the giant one? Well, let's see. The giant one is 17 feet over x. We don't know. All right, now let's see what we got going on here. We have a proportion. See this part right here? That's a proportion, right? So you have like one number over another number equals another number over x, right? That's a proportion. One fraction equals another fraction. And you learn way back in school at some point that you can cross multiply. That's a pre-algebra thing, right? So you can take this not top number times x, cross multiply, and then 5.75 times 17. So that'll work. Or if you like, you can find what this is and divide it by that, right? And then multiply by x, that kind of thing. All right, so let me, let me write it this way. So we'll say, okay, that means that 0 0.6666666 because right, it's lots and lots and lots of them. We know it also is two-thirds, the fraction two-thirds, times x is equal to, and then you multiply the other side, 5.75 so times 17. Okay, well, 5.75 times 17, let's see what that is. That's, and again, you just grab a calculator. I don't have a calculator, so I'm going to have to do it this way. There we go, 97.75. Okay. Now I want to get x by itself because I'm trying to figure out how tall this giant person would be. So I'm going to have to take 97.75 and I'm going to have to divide both sides. So divide the left and divide the right by 0 0.66666. And you do it to the left. Therefore, you got to do it to the right. Keep it fair and balanced. Over here, the 0 0.6 parts are going to cancel, right? Divide away. Because if you have anything over itself, whoops, anything over itself, that's just one. There you go. Cross that off. And let's see, cross that off. Right? So we're going to left x equals, and then we just got to find what this is. Now use lots of decimal places. Don't use 0 0.666. That's not fair. So you got to take 97.75 and divide it by, well, here you guys probably do this, 97.75 and divide it by 0 0.6666666666. Right? Just type a whole bunch in. Okay? And you'll get 146.25, or 625, sorry, 146.625. I think that's what that was. There it is. And that's feet, right? Because this is feet tall. Now, if you wanted to know how many inches that was, well, uh, you know, because, I mean, who says I'm 146.65? So you could take 0.625 and times it by 12 inches. Oh, okay. And again, you guys have calculators to do this. I just don't have one. All right, so that would be 7.5. So it's... 146, 146 feet, 7.5, 7 7.5 inches, right? So I'm 146 feet, 7.5 inches tall. Really tall, right? Lots of, lots of inches going on in there. It's like a 13-story building tall when I think about it. So, not good. Right, let me make Excel go away. All right, so we have how tall the real person is and how tall the giant is, and we've answered the question. All right, so let's get down here. Finish this up. So it says, um, some values of two exact linear relationships are given in the table below. Complete each table. State the slope of each equation. Okay, cool. So we've got 0, 3, and then 1, 8, and then 2 goes to what, 3 goes to what, and so on. Okay, so you notice this is a linear relationship, remember? And linear relationships, if you recall from back here, have the same rise over run every time no matter what. That's kind of what makes them linear. So you can see, 
hold on one sec. There we go. I had to give myself a space to write. Okay, so you can see that we're adding on five here, right? Here, let's put it this way. Slope is equal to um, change in y over change in x, right? So like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now our y2, let me bring it back. Our y2 was 8 minus 3 over 1, whoops, minus 0, sorry about that, minus 0. Okay, 8 minus 3 is 5, 5 over 1 is 5. Of course, this one's so simple you can see that this 5 just by looking at it, right? I mean, hopefully you can. So, um, because you can see here in the table that when x increased by 1, y increased by 5. Now, what does this do for us? Well, then we know how much we should be going up by. If you say, okay, if that's 3, then that's 8, add 5, then what's the next number right here? Poof, it's like magic. I know, I had to have a way to write this with you guys. Okay, so the first one was 3, the second one was 8. Then what about the next one? Well, you take 8 plus 5, right, which is 13. Then you add 5 again, which is 18. Then you add 5 again, which is 23. And there you go. You've got all your values filled in. All right, now we're going to do the same thing over here. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated because they're right, not right next to each other. Honestly, the first one you could have done without really any help at all because you can kind of see that pattern that it's going up by 5, and therefore you can fill in the rest. All right, but over here we've got a little bit of trouble. So we need to take 31, take away 25, over 24, take away 21 right? Because 31 is our y2, 25 is our y1, 24 is the x2 that goes with that, and then 21. So that gives us, let's see what number here, 31 take away 5 is 6, and then 24 take away 21 is 3, right? And then that gives you 2. So your slope is 2, and that will help us fill this out. Hold on, let me go grab a table, hold on. All right, I'm going to make this one disappear and put in one that I can actually write in. It's the same numbers, all right? I haven't changed that. All right, so we have to take 25 plus 2 makes 27. Then 27 plus 2 makes 29. So there's the first two. And then 31 plus 2 makes 33. Now, I know with this, you could have sat there and just kind of trialed and errored it. You know, you can sit there and go, okay, um, you know, 25 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 and try to get to 31 that way. And that would work um, as long as it's a whole number answer. If you sit there long enough, you'll think of it. But it doesn't hurt to also know how to find it for sure, right, with the, with the algebra formula. That way, if it's really hard or they're really far apart, or what if they were decimals or fractions even, this way would still work with the slope, whereas trying to figure it out yourself in your head wouldn't necessarily work. All right, we're all done with this section. I'll see you back here for the next one, which is graphing linear equations. See you then.